Greetings and welcome to the eighth week summary of my pilgrimage here in the Holy Land. I hope that you are doing very well. I bring everyone who watches my video with me in prayer and in spirit to all the places I visit. So um, you have been accompanying me, just watching me and also in my heart on this pilgrimage. So I'm still in Nazareth. If you're watching the video, you can see. I've been in Nazareth now for two weeks. And I took a tour recently from Nazareth to the Golan Heights. So I'm going to start off by talking about my tour to the Golan Heights. First of all, if you want to know the tour company I went with, just send me a message and I will let you know. I absolutely love this tour company. Their tours have been really great that I've taken so far and a really reasonable price and Almost everyone, I think everyone that I've talked to, a number of people who've taken their tours really love them. And I think I said before that I really don't like going on a tour, an organized tour, if I don't have to. Um, I like going on my own. One of the reasons being you can kind of stay longer at different sites and it costs less money. Those are kind of mainly, I think, the two reasons. But sometimes it's hard to get there or it's just for certain reason, it just doesn't seem like I can do it on my own. So this, this one to the Golden Heights, I felt it was just really far north. And that's why I thought I could probably do it, but I liked, I liked what they were doing as well because they were going to the Sea of Galilee area, which I'm gonna be going to when I leave Nazareth. So I thought, so I thought it would give me a good introduction to that because I like, when I go to some place, I like to kind of get myself situated and figure out where everything is. I like to make some videos there and then I like to just sit and pray and be present there. So I thought going on this tour too is going to help me to get familiar with the area a bit. So I don't have to do that when I arrive. I can just really enjoy being there. So yeah, it was a beautiful tour. We left Nazareth in the morning and we took like kind of like a little minivan and we went to Tiberias where which is maybe about was it maybe like a 40 minute drive I think and we picked up a couple people who were coming with us on the tour from Tiberias. Tiberias is a city on the west coast of the Sea of Galilee. Then we went up north along the Sea of Galilee and came to the town of Capernaum. And Capernaum is mentioned a lot in the Bible. It's where Jesus did most of his active ministry after he came out of, of the desert and then before he went down to Jerusalem. So it, I think they called it Jesus's like second hometown or his, his, his hometown because even though he grew up in Nazareth and spent most of his life here, he did most of his ministry. So if you're reading like the Bible, the Gospels, a lot of things say Capernaum. Like he, his, he got a lot of his disciples from Capernaum. He did a lot of his miracles in Capernaum. So yeah, that it was really special being there. I really loved just getting introduction, like I said, to, to seeing Capernaum. And I thought Capernaum was going to be like a regular town with people living in it, like, like say Nazareth or like other places I've seen. And then they would have churches or holy sites in the town. But no, Capernaum's like sectioned off. Like you pay to go into like a gated area and the whole kind of what's remaining, I guess, of the town is, is in ruins. Like there's no people living there. <laughs> Like I thought it would have been like every other place, but no, it's a like a, a historical site, an archeological site. So yeah, it was the Sea of Galilee, which you can see right from Capernaum is gorgeous. It's beautiful. And many people I've met on my pilgrimage have said one of their favorite places has been the Sea of Galilee. There's just something about it. It's so beautiful and peaceful and just, to think of all the biblical things that happened, like Jesus walked on the water there. Um, he multiplied the fish and the loaves. He, more fish came from the water to the apostles at, out of that sea. So yeah, it, it was really beautiful to see that sea. And I, we only had again, like a short time in Capernaum, which I am, as I said, I'm going back there 
when I leave Nazareth to that area. So I want to go back to those spots and spend like a longer period of time. But I was kind of like running around <laughs> trying to get some videos and just seeing where everything is. So they have there what they believe is St. Peter's house. And that's where Jesus healed Peter's mother-in-law. Jesus would have stayed probably at St. Peter's house. And they have, they built a church that looks like kind of like, kind of looks like a spaceship actually, but it's supposed to look like a boat and it's floating kind of over St. Peter's house. So you go into the church and you look down through glass, a glass um, floor and you see St. Peter's house. And you can also see it from outside the church too, see the outside. So it's kind of a neat concept, just an interesting looking kind of church. So it was neat to see that house. And of course there was a cat walking across the glass. <laughs> and one guy commented, he's like, the St. Peter's cat outlived him, like, just like a funny joke. Anyway, I see cats everywhere I go here. But that was St. Peter's house. They also have a synagogue there uh, that was built, I guess, over top of the ruins of what would have been the synagogue there at the time of Jesus, where Jesus would have preached, where he would have, I think he healed a couple people in that synagogue. There's a story about Jairus, whose daughter Jesus healed, and he was a leader in the synagogue there. So yeah, that was really neat to see that synagogue and just to see the ruins and to see the beautiful site with the palm trees and the flowers just overlooking the Sea of Galilee. It was really beautiful to be there. So I'm looking forward to going back and just spending like a lot of time in prayer there and thinking of all that happened there. So we left there and then we went up the hill, which is really close by to the Mount of Beatitudes. And the Beatitudes are kind of like Christian principles that Jesus gave in the gospels, like blessed are the poor in spirit, theirs is the kingdom of heart. Blessed are the pure in heart, they shall see God. And I forget how many there are, it could be like seven of them. So Jesus preached those Beatitudes and gave his famous called Sermon on the Mount, where he, again, talked about different things with prayer and um, different, again, Christian principles of how to live. So that happened in that location. From my research, it seems that the church they built on that hill called the Mount of Beatitudes is not where they think Jesus would have gave that sermon, but it's kind of farther down the hill. And again, this is a little interesting gem I found that there's a cave there where they think Jesus would have went to pray and right above the cave is where they think maybe he gave that sermon. Anyway, it's, it's kind of all in the same area, but I'm excited to go later and really find that cave. But the, they, they did a nice idea of building that church on top of the Mount of Beatitudes because you get a beautiful view. Unfortunately, it was foggy that day. I think there was dust or something coming from like another country that was really fogging up the area. So you, you couldn't really see the Lake of Galilee very well, but they have a beautiful church. Um, inside, they have the Blessed Sacrament right in the middle. So it was very kind of symbolic to me of like Jesus sitting there <laughs> still, you know, preaching to the world. So it was a beautiful location. And again, I, I'm looking forward to going back to the Mount of Beatitudes later on when I go back to that area. So then we came down there and we went to a park called Banias National Park. And this was, this was the reason I really wanted to go on this tour was to go to Banias National Park. So Banias, it used to be called like, I or spelt with like a P, like it would have been like Panius, but I guess the P was silent. So they just kind of changed it to Banius, if I'm getting that correctly. But the park was originally, the park is located where there was a temple to the god Pan, P-A-N, and that's where I think the park got its name from. And that was a Greek god. But wait, I should go back beyond that because I was researching that that area, like in northern Israel, is where the Israelites, during a time when they kind of split up, I think the 12 tribes split up, and there was most of them, 10 of them went to like northern, and I think two of them stayed down in the southern part, if I remember correctly from studying this. 
And unfortunately, I think the northern tribes started to worship false gods. And I think that's, this is kind of the area that that happened in, where the Israelites were worshiping the false gods. Then you have the Greeks coming and worshiping this god Pan. Again, from my research, he was the god of like shepherds and flocks. And I think they said the word panic comes from this god Pan because he used to, I think, scare the um, shepherds and the flocks and kind of make them panic. So that's just a neat little connection there. But they have, they have like, it was amazing to see that they have arches where they would have had images to the god Pan and the ruins of the temple there. Then right beside, so that's, that's built into this huge, enormous rock. It's at kind of a base of a mountain and it's in the foothills around where like Mount Hermon is. So they, they, in this huge rock, they have a giant cave, a hole that used to go, I guess, deep into the mountain. And I think water flowed out of there. And it's where the, the Greeks believed that was the gates of hell where the gods could go into the nether world and back to this world. So that was called like the gates of hell. And I think they did sacrifices by throwing goats um, into that, like I think dead goats as a sacrifice to the gods. So this is, that's what happened there. And then in Roman times, that area I think was given to Herod's, one of Herod's sons, Philip, or he kind of, that was his area. So it was called Caesarea Philippi. And if you know the Bible, you'll recognize that name, Caesarea Philippi. That, and this is the main reason I wanted to, why I wanted to go there, is because Jesus took his disciples to that area. So he was there with his disciples in Caesarea Philippi. And there's the famous Bible passage where Jesus says to his disciples, who do people say that I am? And I think some of them said, well, John the Baptist and Elijah and Peter said, you are the Messiah, the son of the living God. And Jesus said, blessed are you, Simon Peter, um, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my father who is in heaven. And I say to you, you are Peter and upon this rock, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. So that's where Jesus gave him the name Peter and gave him the keys of the kingdom, built, said he would build the church on the rock of Peter. So it was really interesting to just be there. And I had heard this before, so I knew about it and I seen pictures about it, but just to be there and see this huge rock. So the, the background imagery that the people, the disciples would have saw when they were talking to Je when Jesus was explaining that to them there. And then also he said, the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And there was this hole there that they believed was the gates of hell. So it was, it was amazing being there. And I guess it would have been, from what I heard, I think a tour guide said, like it wasn't a respectable area. Um, you know, it was kind of an area of people worshiping false gods. So just, I, I don't, I don't haven't unpacked all that yet and what that would have meant for them to be there. But yeah, it was really special to be there. And I was so excited to go. Yeah, it was just a huge blessing. Um, I, I'm making it like a YouTube short. If you want to see pictures of that, you can find it in one of my YouTube shorts that I'm going to post a bit later. In the park, they had a lot of other things too. The park is huge. Like you, you could literally go for a day or more. So they have a, the, the Crusaders were also there at one point and they had like a city. So there's a gate left from the Crusaders time. There's part of a palace from, I think, King Herod Agrippa II, maybe like a great, great grandson of Herod the Great. They have a ton of stuff. And then way over on the west side of the park, they have a beautiful waterfall. Ah, oh, just so lovely. Again, I'm going to make a, um, a, like a like short video with little clips from that park. Gorgeous waterfall, gorgeous. So Banias National Park in the Golan Heights, I highly recommend if you ever come here to go there. So much beauty, so much history, so much theology, amazing. I'm so thankful that the Lord got me there. And it's been amazing because almost everything like that I've kind of wanted to go to 
I, the Lord has made a way. And I do think also it's connected to, yes, I have the determination, but his grace works everything out. And um, yeah, also that it's beautiful to be able to share this. And I think God wants it shared, so he's helping me to find a way to do that. Because yeah, it was interesting. The tour guide I think wasn't originally gonna go to the, the site where the temple ruins were, but then someone else on the tour wanted to go there too, so he kind of made an exception. So just little things like that happen all along that God like makes a way where there wasn't apparently going to be a way. And then also in that area, sorry, one more thing before I move on. They think that that's where Jesus healed the woman who had the issue of blood and she touched his like garment and just believed that if she touched him, she would be healed. So they think that could have happened there as well. So such an exciting spot. Ah. So after that, we went to Mount um, Betal. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. And from that mountain, you can see the border between Israel and Syria. And Damascus is like, I think, 65 kilometers from that mountain. And that's where Paul was headed on his way to persecute the Christians and where he was knocked off his horse and he heard the voice of the Lord Jesus saying, I'm Jesus whom you're persecuting. And then he converted to Christianity. So that was close by. We stopped off at a winery to taste some of the wine. I'm not like a wine drinker, but I had just like a few couple sips just to taste what it was like, but it was neat to see. I guess they have really, really good grapes. It's, it's a very lush area in the Golan Heights. Like just even the air is very fresh. Everything is green. And then we were able to stop in the Sea of Galilee, right in the north, kind of right near Capernaum on our way back. And we were able to go for a swim, a swim in the Sea of Galilee. <laughs> it was so exciting to swim there. Like Jesus walked on the water. So many things happened there. So it was beautiful. It was a really, really hot day. And it was very interesting because we came from the Golan Heights, which was a really cool temperature, maybe like 23. And then we arrived where it was like 30. And it, you just felt the difference when we arrived only 30 minute drive and it was really hot. So it was so nice to jump into the Sea of Galilee and so nice to be able to swim. <laughs> Fresh water, that was just a huge blessing. And then the tour, the guy, driving the tour was an amazing man. He was really, really good at what he did, really friendly, very accommodating. And he said, if we have time, we'll stop up at the church of the multiplication of the loaves and the fishes. And that's where Jesus performed the miracle of multiplying loaves and fishes. So we did have time to stop off there just briefly. Again, I'm gonna be going back to there. So I didn't really take any pictures or stay long, but what I did do there is I'm staying very close to that church. Um, when in another part of my pilgrimage so i was able to find the location for where i'm staying which again i just thank god so much because i'm going on my own so god has and this was a little bit of an obscure one to find because i kind of just found it randomly online so i was really happy to know where i'm going when i go there and i'm so excited to be able to spend just a few days by the sea of galilee all right, um, yeah, what else has been happening during my time in Nazareth? I, it's been more of like just a very peaceful and relaxing time here in Nazareth. Again, there's not really like a lot to do. I was able to go a second time to the Holy House where they think Jesus, Mary and Joseph lived. <laughs> I, you have to book a tour, so it's not just you can go in anytime. So I was really happy to be able to get to go to that tour again. I got to stay for a long period of time. I made a short about some of the things that, short video of some of the things I did there. So that was a huge blessing. And yeah, like I said, it's been mostly a time of just like reflection and prayer. And there's some things that I'm trying to figure out for my summer plans and plans for the fall. So it's been a really good time just to figure all that out. So I haven't been really going around and visiting a lot. I've been mostly like praying, spending extra time at these holy sites here in Nazareth, just imagining like what it would have been like. So I, I sit kind of where St. Joseph had his carpenter shop 
And I just picture St. Joseph working there and I picture myself like sitting there chatting to him while he's working. And I'm, I said to him like, have you, did you ever get a sliver from working on the wood? Like, did you enjoy what you did? Did you, are things you created still in existence somewhere? So just kind of like really being present and imagining what it was like. That's what I did in the Holy House. I was just thinking like, Jesus slept here, he ate here, he played there. What did they do in the evening together? You know, so that's kind of just really absorbing being present in these locations. So that's been kind of like my time in Nazareth. It's been more like prayerful, reflective, slowing down. I've done a lot of like reflection even in my own life like my past, my future, my relationship with God. It, it's been just a really prayerful, meditative, um, like life, life reflection time here in Nazareth. And again, I've met beautiful, beautiful people. Like I went to the Golan Heights. I, the girl who I kind of buddied with a bit when we were going there, we were sharing a dorm together. So it was really blessed again. God has always given me kind of someone that, you know, I can talk to or ask questions to. Um, yeah, I think that kind of covers so far my eighth week. The main highlight being that tour and just, yeah, praying and going forward. I have one more week here. So again, I think it's going to be a lot of the same thing. I, I plan on maybe taking um, a pilgrimage on my own. We'll see if that ends up happening, but I think just a lot of like prayer reflection, kind of getting things in order for my summer and for the fall. So yeah, that's, that's Nazareth. Just um, a beautiful time here. I made a video that I'm going to be posting on just a tour around Nazareth to, to get an idea of the holy sites here. So that's the summary of my eighth week. Sending love and prayers and I hope I just wish many blessings upon you. Thank you for watching. Take care. Bye.